the Chasing a Tail Tempest Trials accompanies our Spring Banner. If you score the maximum 50,000 points, you can get up to 42 orbs, 11,000 feathers, and 80 sacred coins. This month, we have Ephemera 3 Divine Codes and an Earth Blessing for Legendary Male Alir. For Sacred Seals, we have Attack and Defense Clash and Rouse Defense and Res. The reward unit for this month is Spring Lanehart. You can get a 4 star and 5 star copy, and we'll talk about it more later on. First up, we have a brand new skill line being turned into a Sacred Seal. Attack and Defense Clash 3 states, if unit or foe initiates combat after moving, grant bonus attack and defense during combat equal to X plus 5. X is just the number of spaces moved by the initiator with a max of plus 3 for 3 spaces moved. Clash 3 is excellent and probably the new go-to for a lot of builds that want to run stat boosters like solo or catch. It's usable by all melee units except armored ones, so lots of users. Compared to the tier 4, your max stat boost is plus 8 compared to plus 10, and there is no secondary effect for moving at least 2 spaces. The only thing you need for Clash to work is the user or enemy must have moved at least 1 space. If you're standing still or the enemy attacks without moving, this skill does not work. For the most part, it's not a huge issue, but if you're in close quarters and surrounded, maybe you might not be able to move. Overall, Clash 3 Sacred Seals will be quite good though. If you activate them, you can already match the plus 6 stats from solos. It's more than catch 3's plus 5, and you get more than forms plus 7. I would say, generally, for newer players who don't have large stashes of coins, Clash Sacred Seals may be near the top for upgrade priority. Stats for either phase, not the hardest activation condition, and one of the higher stat boost values. Cavaliers obviously can max out the stat boost naturally, but infantry and flyers can reach 3 spaces via warp movement. We did just get a new unit who can give charge to anyone. Now, our second circuit seal is Rouse Demon's Remise 3. At start of turn, if unit is solo, grant plus 6 Demon's Remise field boss for 1 turn. Rouse requires you to be completely alone, which might be an issue depending on spacing. For the most part, self-buffing sacred skills aren't really worth using to me because most of them are C skills, and if I use the C skill version, I can then run a sacred seal with in-combat stats. For example, the new refine for Fallen Mill Corn gives him plus 6 attack and speed field buffs. He is a unit who wants to be alone, so Rouse Demon's Remez would be a good fit. However, I could just run Demon's Remez solo and get the same stats just in combat. Better yet, if I use Rouse Defense Res as a C scale, now I can use Bonus Doubler and double four field buffs. Unless a unit really wants field buffs for something, I think you should spend your coins on a Tekken Defense Clash instead. Last up, not for the Tempest Trials, but part of update 8.3 is Squad Ace CB3. Beat the 80th Squad Assault for this Sacred Seal. This seal grants a flat plus three speed, defense and res, very simple. Sometimes you just don't want to deal with any activation conditions and you can't decide what stats you want more of. I'd rather be napping, but I'll go to the festival if you insist. Spring has the best weather for outdoor naps. That's a fact. The Tempest Trials unit for this year's Spring Banner is Spring Linhart. It feels like Linhart and Mirabilis should have been the harmonic. If you weren't aware, Linhart did interact with Mirabilis in his forging bonds, where the two bonded over dreams and napping. What a surprise. I do like when we get alts with callbacks to previous Fae original character interactions. This is why I'm pretty sure Spring Sylvain's rally focused weapon is a nod to his conversation with Saint. Now, for his first ult, Spring Linhart is now a colorless infantry archer. For stats, he has 40 HP, 46 attack, 31 speed, 25 defense, and 46 resistance. Sort of similar to his original form, but we're dropping some defense for much more higher attack and res. Linhart has a res super boon, and I believe this is enough to make him the new highest res archer in the game. For free to play archers, Linhart is 6 whole points ahead of the next closest, and this will be important for his weapon. We've had a carrot tip bow before, and now it's just the cooler carrot bow plus. 12 might, inheritable bow. As sort of player enemy phase, if any foes within 3 rows or 3 columns, centered on unit have less res than the unit's res plus 5, then inflict minus 7 attack and defense and discord on those foes through the next actions. If the foe initiates combat or has more than 75% HP, grant plus 5 attack and resistance, and if Discord is active on the foe, then the user gets Omni Breaker. Not sure I'm going to call the 3 row 3 column range the crux range now, but this is also the debuff range for tier 4 ploy skills. Carrot Bow Plus is basically an attack and defense ploy weapon. The range and res check condition is the same as the tier 4 versions, but instead of the ploy and exposure statuses, we got Discord. 
Discord inflicts debuffs to all stats based on the number of nearby allies. It has a base minus 2 to everything, but with 3 nearby allies, this can go up to minus 5. We do not currently have an attack and defense ploy 3 in the game, but we also don't have a speed and res ploy 3 either. This means if you wanted to run a ploy 4 to add the actual ploy and exposure statuses while debuffing all 4 stats, you're at the mercy of the devs. We could get speed and res ploy this month or it could be next year. At the moment, you're going to be overlapping stat debuffs. Besides the support part of the weapon, this build grants plus 5 attack and resistance and if Discord is on the enemy, you get a free follow up attack and deny one enemy follow up. This year's spring units have a theme of checking for one certain status that, rather than say a bonus or penalty, Omni Breaker on a weapon is actually not bad at all, especially for a slower unit like Linhart here. However, Discord is not a super common status, so basically you have to land the debuffs from this weapon. I think the only inheritable way to get Discord via a skill is those Ruse for B skills. Overall, a partial support bow is neat, but as we'll discuss, the amount of viable users is not exactly high. Sadly, I also don't think you get the pillow. For the rest of his base kit, Linhart actually has useful stuff. Glacies for his very high res if you can charge it up. He will be the second free to play unit with Stillwater 3. Plus 5 attack and resistance at the cost of minus 5 defense. You then have sabotage defense, which is a little odd. It works with Linhart's high base res and can debuff foes not in player range. However, Carapo really wants to fight enemies with Discord, and if they have Discord, they also have minus 7 defense, which makes the sabotage redundant. Regardless, this base kit works just fine. More flower resistance to win the res checks for Carrot Bow Plus. You want to fight foes debuff with Discord to gain Omni Breaker. We can probably swap sabotage out or change it to a speed or res version. If you plan to merge up Blainheart in the Neutral Nature is going to add plus 1 HP attack and defense. If you want to run Carrot Bow Plus though, you may want that res super boom. More attack could also work too if you prefer a burstier build. For free to play comparisons, if you want a high res archer, you will not find another heroic role option besides Linhart. If you want a high stat stat stacking jack of all trades, then Suro is that unit. He's got trainee stats and his bow just adds more general stats. The only unit to break 30 res in stats with dragon flyers is George, and that's nowhere close to Linhart. He trades that attack and res for more HP and defense though. George technically also has a support type bow, and he should get refined later this year, so maybe he could become a different type of support archer. In terms of attack, Linhart is pretty ahead of everyone here. We can make some fun builds with that, and that's not including the general Brave Bow 2 tap. Young Innes is still a fun damage dealer if you want, because he has a deer piercing weapon. On the demo 3 to 4 star side, we have a couple higher res units. Will is the latest demo and is Gen 8 like Linhart. However, he's 6 points behind in res, so again, the carrot bow plus is kind of just automatically best on Linhart himself. Will can use it, but obviously you may miss some res checks. If you have a fully invested Niles with the resplendent outfit technically has higher res than Will. That comes at the cost of terrible 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 base attack. It's not ideal, but at least with carrot bow, Niles can contribute to the team in other ways if you want to use him. Besides Will and Niles, Spring Linhart is just the go-to if you want the high resistance. His attack is also excellent, but he is stuck with that awkward low 30 base speed. It can be useful with Caribou's Omni Breaker, but obviously no follow-up effects are just going to bypass that entirely. Linhart will not tank physical damage well either, and with still water, you're tanking that defense stat even more. If you wanted high attack or even high speed archers, we got a ton of fun units. Dorothy's just cracked, and Norin is still kind of a decent older jack-of-all-trades type unit. Will is the most similar, but Spring Linhart definitely stands alone with his Mage S stat spread. This includes all the 5 star archers. He is the new highest res archer around. For general playstyle, Spring Linhart gets to utilize his unique stat spread with his unique inheritable bow. Carrot Bow Plus essentially is like a tier 4 ploy skill for attack and defense. You do not inflict the actual ploy status nor exposure, but you do inflict Discord, which punishes grouped up enemy teams. If Linhart fights a foe at Discord, he gets a free follow up and a follow up denial, aka just a better Breaker B skill. With 31 base speed, Linhart will take both of those. For budget skills, already having Stillwater 3 is quite nice. The higher Linhart's flat res, the better chance for Carrot Bow's debuff, although the weapon itself gives you a 5 point leeway. You can go with a res for fine and another still water sacred seal. If you add dragon flowers, that's going to get him to 60 flat res without merges. It also will tank Leonard's defense to 15. So yeah, obviously not great. 
Since Linhardt's starting res is already very high, you could opt for smaller stat boosts that don't kill his already bad low defense. For example, since Karibo has no HP condition, you could run Fury. We got the squad a Sacred Seals, and there's also Phantom Res. But personally, I think having actual res is generally more preferred. For the Fury route, since Karibo has a free follow-up, you can technically use Desperation. There's also a unique opportunity to run double breaker effects. Breaker B skills only affect one weapon type, but double breaker effects are technically useful. For example, that new Wyvern Rift B skill has its own breaker type effect. What a fancy smancy speed altering role. Well, Karibo's breaker effect will cancel out Wyvern Rifts, and that leaves Linhart still with a free follow up and follow up denial. This is why no follow up is so powerful, because that skill destroys this entire plan. For some other skills, you could swap Sabotage out to another stat, and you can run a Ploy 3C skill like Speed Ploy. You help all your allies, and technically Linhart can use the speed. Guard is decent to have, and Heavy Blade benefits from the attack debuffs from the weapon. Since the Ploy 4 effect activates at start of enemy phase 2, it can benefit from Res Field Boss. An ult self buff would be fine, or maybe a Link B skill to buff an ally. For specials, unless you got a game plan, maybe you might want to drop down to 3 quid on Iceberg instead of Glacies. For premium skills, instead of still Water 4, you could opt for Forge's Demons and Res. Lanehart can't afford to lose 2 attack, if you prefer a slightly better opportunity to survive. Now it does not exist yet, but if Speed and Res Ploy 3 were to happen, then Lanehart would be able to debuff all 4 stats, plus you inflict the Ploy, Exposure, and Discord status. Same idea as Validar, just a full Ploy debuff support. You can use Tier 4 Sabotages, those give in combat stats, but there is no attack and defense version yet. It may not be necessarily because Carrot Bow procs the start of both phases, but you can also use Ruse 4 to inflict Discord proactively. Technically, this does bypass someone like Freyr. Additionally, this inflicts Guardian Schism, but like Ploy, there's no speed and res Ruse 4 yet. Overlapping debuffs can be okay for this one. For non Ploy 4 builds, you can use Oath 4 for warping, more rally into Ruse options, same for Carrot Bow. Linhart also could use Inventory No Follow, that has warping, and technically No Follow will help against really slow enemies. If you're going for the lazy backline support, Contra Control, another fun option. On that topic, instead of Breaker B skills, we have some other options like Bratch Assault 4 or Crooked Pose 4. These provide percent damage reduction, just be aware of enemy No Follow. If you want, you could use Physical No Follow for Partial Deer Pierce, maybe you can do a Mad Lad Speed build. For some defensive skills, you can stack Fall of Denial with impact skills. Mystic Boost can disable adaptive damage, which would be really nice if you're going the at Stillwater route. This would give Linhart a better chance to not immediately get cooked by a dragon. The tier 4 Mystic Boost also disables Dazzling Staff, so if you really hate, you can antagonize healers who continue to just get more and more damage skills. Now for a bit of a niche but maybe fun build, you could make use of that New Year's Plumeria Ephemera, close ward for close counter against dragons, and neutralize adaptive damage. Take note, the neutralizing adapt damage only works for enemy phase. For other inheritable weapons, Arcane Nashron's a fine option, still gain a free fall up and now you have 30% DR. Maybe you can stack percent DR more, and of course, Sling opens the door to more infantry cooldown skill abuse. It's not free to play, but the Wyvern Yumi Plus is a dual phase brave bow that's fun for a high attack archer who may be okay dumping speed. If you want a more aggressive, selfish weapon, Linhart has an amazing inheritable option in Winter Clones, Golden Yo Bow Plus. On top of general stats to everything, it grants instant cooldown for every space move by the initiator. He isn't a cavalier, but if the foe has an active penalty, then Linhart can get the minus three cooldown automatically. If we drop Carrot Bow, you're still free to run the actual ploy for C skills and stack flat reds as needed. Land Devils to proc instant icebergs and add Special Spiral 4 to turn that into full DR piercing one shots. Sure, you could use Deadeye, but Special Spiral could be spicy if you were to go for Glacies. For an extreme measure, Emblem Marth for slaying, but really, we just need one cooldown from anywhere like Quick Impulse or Imagery Pulse. Let's say Lanehart gets that one cooldown and attacks for Golden Yo Bow's minus three cooldown. Instant DR piercing, 80% res, scaling Glacies nukes. Well, because of Special Spiral, we now refund minus 2 cooldown. This will now let Linhart loop Glacies with Golden Yobo's instant cooldown. This could be a lot more damage than Deadeye. Feel free to run Finish 4 for bonus damage. Mirror Impact also works due to that plus 10 res. The main trade off here is Ploy 4 consistency. However, if you have other debuffing units, then feel free to just run another C skill and not worry about flat res stacking at all. One issue with the Golden Yule Bow is that Scow will mess up the game plan. 
dual winter bonnet, for example, is normally just immune to this type of cheese. However, remember, Scal requires the user to win a res check. Linhart is the new highest res archer in the game. He has the best chance to avoid Scal. It's not guaranteed by any means, but this is honestly a very cool niche. Maybe sleeping in class does pay off. I agree. Of course. Steady now. Is someone sleepy? Let me aid you. Fine, fine. What's fun about this? Overall, Fun Tempest Trials, the beginning of Clash Sacred Seals may be worth saving coins for later. I think Attack and Demons Clash is 100% worth upgrading, and honestly, you can probably near the top in terms of priority if you need more stat boosters. As for Spring Linhart, we do not have many high attack and res archers. Will is the closest and he's 6 hole res behind. Depending on how you feel about speed, Linhart is just more min-maxed. He then can use his high base res for Carrot Boat Plus, same range and res check as Deploy 4C skills. You don't actually inflict Deploy status, but this weapon hits attack and defense and applies Discord. If the foe has Discord, the user gets Ani Breaker, which is pretty good for basic combat. While Linhart is pretty much the best user of this inheritable bow, I think that Golden Yule bow niche of being able to just flat out avoid scout is worth something. It's such a cheesy weapon, and being able to not get scout is something a lot of other archers cannot avoid. Dragons also rely on res checks for Dragon Wall and the new Dragon's Roar. They are susceptible to high res units like Linhart. But of course, adaptive damage will destroy him. One neat detail I like about this Spring Lin Heart is that his idle animation has him dozing off a couple times before getting in a big yawn. Animation power creep is something we can all appreciate. I also like that he literally has brought a pillow to the battlefield. That's all I got to say for this video. I personally think Lin Heart's a fun character, but didn't really have any plans for a long term build. I feel like they may have changed. We'll see how the rest of the year goes. Thank you for watching though. Go get those rewards, and I will see you guys in the next video.